Why do social justice people gotta be so arrogant? This is a world. This is a world. This is a world. Hey y'all, welcome to some more food for thought. Hey y'all. So um, first of all, I'm just checking in. I was in Detroit for. The weekend, you know, for about five days, six days, I ended up having some flights canceled. I didn't get back in time. Did not make videos last week because of that. Made a video early in the week, and so I'm really behind. So I'm gonna be continuing with the series on the Constitution. The next video on the Constitution is gonna be picking up with those two sections from Article One that have to deal with the powers of Congress. Gonna be picking up with those just later in the week, probably tomorrow or, you know, Saturday. Anyway, so that video is, that video is coming. But I wanted to talk to you all about some things that happened when I was in Detroit that I didn't get to keep you up to date with. There was a great talk at the James and Grace Lee Boggs Center, which I had hoped to go to, would have needed to change my flight in order to go to. When my flight was canceled, there I was uh, suddenly available to go to this meeting and I went and it was actually a really great discussion. There were a lot of folks there who are part of the social justice community, including Tawana Petty, who you all met in one of my videos, maybe two years ago, I did a video about Tawana. Shane Bernardo was there, who some of you may recognize. He was one of the folks who was interviewed as part of the film Cowspiracy. It started with this discussion about what are the barriers now that people are facing in being able to accomplish their work. Again and again, it seems to come up that people are having either difficulty engaging with the populations within which they are working or people who are really judgmental of either the people that they're working with or judgmental of others who may be in disagreement about what it is that they're talking about or what it is the way that they're expressing themselves, their worldview perhaps. But it left me thinking, you know, first of all, when we start having discussions about social justice, I feel that there tends to be kind of two camps in social justice. There are the folks in social justice who look at social justice as a way of re-evaluating society, really analyzing the society that we're in, seeing where things are working and seeing where there are contradictions, right? And it's not as if there are ever going, to, we're ever going to be living in a society without contradictions. Contradictions will likely always exist. And hopefully, society is a process of evaluating contradictions and trying to resolve contradictions, understanding that when we resolve one contradiction, another one likely is going to emerge. And then there are folks who think that social justice is a label <laughs> that you just put on and you say like, I'm a social justice advocate and it means that you can basically do whatever it is that you wanna do. Likely most people are somewhere in the middle there, right? And they're trying to do their best, they're just being their best, but you know, human nature, you know, causes us to go off the rails. There seems to be this emerging understanding of a movement on the left, they're gonna call it the left, and I don't necessarily think of social justice as being the realm of the left. I think that social justice is for everyone and it should be independent of your political beliefs. The idea of social justice is trying to determine what is the most fair way to, a fair and just way to run a society. And so then we get into this idea of, okay, what does it mean to be the regressive left? And there's this whole folks who are trying to shut down conversations and people talk about safe spaces. And I don't know what most of these things mean because they're not how I operate and people that I tend to work with don't engage in these ways. I think there needs to be a distinction made between the practice of what is just basic decency or even discovering what we mean by basic decency and being politically correct and politically correct to the point of being regressive. And what I mean by that is 
Things can be up for discussion, but it doesn't mean that those things are up for debate. And we have to be really clear about the way we present things, the way we frame spaces, so that if I am simply trying to talk about a reality, something that is existing, something that exists in the world around me, that should be open to any topic because if it is a reality, we should be able to discuss it and analyze it. That doesn't mean that we should be creating spaces to say, discuss the values of everything that is an aspect of reality, right? We don't need to have a space to debate the morality of murder. We don't need a space to debate the validity of the exploitation of children. We can simply look at that as something that we don't want to have as a component of our society. And if someone does want that as a component of society, we can agree that that's pathology and that needs to be dealt with in a very particular way, likely with the assistance of a mental health professional. That doesn't, however, preclude us from having a discussion about the reality of the exploitation of children or violations against whatever particular group. Those are things that exist or things that might happen within any particular group. To bring those things up and to discuss their, their existence, especially if we're trying to discuss those things because we want to see them come to an end. When we're talking about things that happen in the context of a society, they should be things that benefit that society. And generally what I mean by that is things that help us come to an understanding about the way that we as a society are going to behave towards each other or the ways that we are going to interact or the ways that we are going to share resources. That's a particular type of discussion that we have to be clear we are having when we sit down at the table. And that's very different than what we simply want to reveal as part of our psychology. And this is where we end up getting into a lot of trouble because I think that there are people who simply think that topics are taboo. There really shouldn't be a topic that is taboo. It should just be understood the why of the conversation going in so people don't feel like they may be being coerced in a direction or that people don't sit down and find out, oh, this was a recruitment activity. The censorship of topics or discussion points across the board are, I think, in the long run, a negative thing. I do think, though, that context is very important. I think what can be said in a kindergarten classroom is very different than what we can talk about in a, say, university setting or as part of the comedy routine at a nightclub. Which brings me to the point of from what position we're participating in these particular conversations. If my goal, for example, is to make you laugh and I tell a joke that is off color, the punishment is that you don't laugh or that I get booed off stage. It shouldn't necessarily lead to my being labeled in any particular way or my being banned from a particular space. It's understood in that context that what I am doing is for the sake of entertainment and I'm gonna be judged as either entertaining or not entertaining. If I'm in a leadership role or if I'm the professor in a classroom, then the way that I speak should be judged very differently. If I'm hanging out with a group of friends, then the way that I speak should be judged in a very different way. I think we become very arrogant in the social justice community when we think that we own social justice, number one, when we think that we are the keepers of the morality in a society because it is not necessarily the case that as a social justice advocate, I am necessarily going to be coming from a particular moral standpoint. Again, understanding that social justice is not the realm of the left, but that social justice should belong to everyone. If you haven't gotten your hands on a copy of Pedagogy of the Oppressed, I do strongly urge you to get your hands on a copy of it. We're gonna be reading it on the channel together. We're gonna to be having a little bit of a study group and we're gonna be talking about this in the live streams on Sundays. Not this coming Sunday, but very, very, very soon, I would say by the start of the new year. So that gives people a couple of months to get this book in their hands and read as soon as possible. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves.
Peace. And I